Hey, what's up? It is BQ, and we are on the heels of a pretty damn good Impact Wrestling Redemption pay-per-view last night. We're going to be reviewing the pay-per-view here on the channel like we always do, so definitely stand by for that. I want to talk about one of the big things that happened last night, and that was the Tessa Blanchard debut. First thing I want to say, if you want to ensure that you receive all the uploads from the Impact Lounge channel next to the subscribe button, you're going to see a little bell. Hit that bell. Slam the shit out of that bell. That's going to ensure that you get all of the uploads here at the channel. Now, a lot of you just prefer the news and rumors, don't like the interviews and the reviews. That's fine. But if you see those upload, you know, maybe give a thumbs up. That'll help the channel out a lot so we can spread and spread the good word about Impact Wrestling to people who want to hear it. So let's talk about Tessa Blanchard last night. Big debut. I like how they did it. They did it in the announce booth. They didn't have her coming through the crowd. They didn't have her jumping the champion after the match, interfering with the match. I think that's really played out. Now, a lot of people on social media are saying, well, she took away from the match. I think what a lot of people like about here at the channel is that we try to you know, bring you some common sense. That match was booked for Tessa to debut. That wasn't booked for us to enjoy Kiara Hogan versus Taya one-on-one in a random knockouts match. That was booked for Tessa to, de to debut. They obviously weren't going to bring her out during the knockouts title match to take away from that. So it was actually done very well. I like that she's saying, hey, with my pedigree, I deserve to be at the top of the division. So that's different than what we normally get with just someone coming through the crowd, attacking the champion and getting a title shot. She is putting herself in that main event scene because she thinks she already deserves it. She really cut some good heel promos. And she's not joking when she says she's the best out there on the independent scene. I challenge you to look up any of her matches. I usually recommend people look at matches with Rachel Ellering because those, those are the ones I like personally, mainly because I love Rachel also. But this chick is so fluid in the ring and talking. And if they can lock her down long term, and that's a big if, if they can keep her long term, she can really be the face of the division and can maybe even be that Gail Kim of the future. Like she's that... Damn good. Again, I, I, I challenge you to look up anything about her. I've met her in person and I didn't know she had that kind of personality that she showed when she was in the booth. She was amazing. I, I could have listened to her all day. She has a future in doing that forever. And hasn't the knockouts division on the heel side just taken a huge bump? I mean, a huge step forward. You're talking, you got Tessa, you got Taya, you got Sienna, you got Sue Young. And then on the baby faces, you got Allie and Rosemary holding it down. Yes, we've got Alicia and Kiera. They're not really there yet. And then um, Diamante, I'm sure, is going to factor in there as well. I don't know how much of an in-ring competitor she's going to be going forward. Who really knows? But the knockout division is looking excellent. And this is the girl to sign and to take it into the future if you haven't seen her work check her out look her up look up any of her freaking matches now what is something that a lot of people are saying too well she's just going to go to nxt one day nxt has had plenty of opportunities to sign this girl she they've even used her on their programming several times they were in shimmer at shimmer scouting not too long ago and i, I was you know i read that they came away very impressed with her but here's the thing, and again, this is just bringing common sense into it. I think her gimmick is too close to Charlotte Flair's. And when you got Charlotte Flair's second generation wrestler, and then you got Tessa coming in, well, I'm a third generation wrestler, and I'm, I'm this and this. I think this I, that's kind of a, a one-upping to what they're doing with Charlotte. And I think she's too similar. And I personally think she's actually better in the ring than Charlotte. I think, I think Charlotte is good, but I think she does a lot of unnecessary spots. Tessa is one of those, like she's a really smart wrestler. And um, everything she does makes sense when she's out there. And obviously, she's coming to Impact. They're letting her be her, run with the gimmick the way she needs to run with it. And t did you hear how convincing she was in the booth? Because everything she said was true. She wasn't trying to, you know, they didn't give her some lines and say, hey, be this person when you show up. Like, she was being her, and it was very authentic. I truly think she's going to be the one to um, take the knockouts division to the next step. I really do. Um, they got to find that right opponent for her. We'll see if her and, you know, Ali Mesh or whatever it is or whoever they try to pair her up with. But they definitely got to get they um they definitely got to get the right opponents for her. So I think the knockout division may need a couple baby faces that can also go in the ring and just can't wait to see what happens in the future, folks, with her and with the division. They're killing it. The belt that they debuted is beautiful. Can't wait to see what happens. If you're a first-timer here, please hit subscribe, leave a thumbs up, 
and talk to you soon. Peace.